Uh, this new Hardy album is not good. Hardy is a country singer and songwriter who is now doing his thing out of Nashville. We have his second full-length LP here, The Mockingbird and the Crow, which uh, kind of grabbed my attention at the start of this year because uh, it was a pretty big country release, and on top of it, it's a double concept album, which there's not a whole lot of in the country sphere. I mean, that has been changing as of late, but country, not exactly a genre known for its concept albums known for its double albums. Was kind of curious if a guy like Hardy here uh, has the power, the will, the artistry to change that. But uh, if the genre is someday known for, you know, delivering that sort of thing, I, I hope it's not records like this that are, you know, um, brought up. Because this was a wild, wild, wild ride. And, uh, not in a good way. Records like this put me in a really weird position because uh, there's a lot of people who would react to a review like this and say that uh, I'm hating this album because I hate country music or I hate uh, the culture that it uh, represents or that it relates to. When in fact I don't really have any uh, issues personally uh, with southern culture or rural life, small town living, I happen to think that there is a lot to uh, that background and lifestyle and history, uh, but it's records like this that kind of reduce it down to its dumbest, lowest common denominator elements, and rather than celebrating it for what it is or potentially could be, we are instead getting songs about a uh, Bear Jack Daniels! As if country music culture uh, doesn't have anything to offer other than that. Like, there are more references to Walmart on this record uh, than there is to anything genuinely Southern. <laughs> like, even the Bisquick shout out, I wonder if some of the lyrics on this LP are subtle product placement. But let me kind of get into the concept of this double album. The record works in two halves. Uh, we have the first half, the Mockingbird half, which is where Hardy, uh, pretty much indulges in some very sanitary, overproduced, bland, and difficult to listen to modern country balladry acoustics, uh, just low-key tracks, songs that have more of a sentimental, uh, sad, or maybe even hopeful angle. Be that, again, with the very nostalgic beer, or the track Red, where Hardy is not talking politics. He's talking red lips, and red this, and red that. Just, just beautiful things that are read that remind him of uh, his upbringing and his past. Both those tracks are honestly disgustingly corny to me. What makes them even more difficult to listen to, and most of the ballads on this LP, is that the vocal harmonies are layered so aggressively and all sound like they have some kind of pitch correction on them, so it sounds like I'm listening to an AI country singer uh, rather than a human perform them. Sometimes the volume on the singing is so ah, it's so high, it's kind of drowning out everything else. There are some more interesting narratives popping up a little later in this half of the LP, though. We have Wait in the Truck, uh, which is a story song where Hardy comes across a woman who obviously has been through a bout of domestic abuse, and then he takes it upon himself to uh, enact some vigilante justice. Narratively, that one obviously has its merits, but the track doesn't really feel like it centers around uh, misogyny or abuse of women generally. It's more like one man's power fantasy in, in terms of, like, you know, getting the bad guy. As the track is not so much about what this woman has gone through, uh, it's more about this guy being an angel for uh, what he's doing. The song Drink One On Me uh, is this very heavenly sentimental cut, which obviously deals in death and mortality and and passing over to the other side, and while I can sympathize with a track that uh, uh, deals in love and loss, uh, hearing Hardy sing about, there ain't no beer in heaven, so drink one for him is just too much. Aesthetically, the song has the glossy, gross, uh, ultra shiny finish and veneer of a Christian rock song, uh, but lyrically it just sounds like a, a drinking song. And so many of the tracks in the first half of this thing are couched in the like worst, most stomach churning, most uh, eye roll worthy chorus ideas, like the song "I in Country" because there's there's no I in country, but there's a Y O U. Oh yeah, baby, there's a Y O U in country. <laughs> 
the following track, Screen, is even more inadvertently funny, uh, where Hardy is is taking it to technology. Oh man, you know, keep that phone in your pocket at the rock show. Ah! Pull the plug and break the glass. I don't want to see no more screens. What are you doing to me? God, and the lyric about a, a, a baseball, a lonely baseball getting dusty at Walmart because nobody's buying baseballs at Walmart. They're all on their iPads now. The song Happy sees um, Hardy singing about happiness as if it's this character, it's a sentient being, like like something from a Dr. Seuss story. Some of the bars here are cute, I can admit, but I don't really like uh, the message the song is couched in overall toward the end. As Hardy seems to think that people aren't happy uh, just because they don't they don't want to be. They're just refusing to be happy. They're refusing happiness. Happiness is banging on their door saying, please let me in. Let me make you happy. And people are just, uh, just refusing uh, to be happy. They're letting in hate instead. What kind of hate we're talking about, I don't know. He doesn't really get specific about that or much of anything else. Uh, the, the possibility that people could be legitimately unhappy uh, because of things happening to them or stuff that's out of their control doesn't really enter into the equation. Of course, we also get some genius level art commentary with the track Here Lies Country Music. Yeah, country music's dead. It's over. It's long gone. It's done. Uh, what, what did it die of? Hardy says, a lonely, broken heart. A lonely, broken heart is the reason country is dead. It's not industry produced gobbledygook that is completely out of touch with the lives and hardships of average people uh, coming from the regions of the country this music is supposed to represent uh, outside of, you know, just being like, uh, you don't like screens and Walmart, Walmart beer. Following this, we have the title track, The Mockingbird and the Crow, which is a bit of a baton pass moment on the album because this is where we, we transition into the second half. This is where the concept of the record really comes into play and we're, we're, we're moving into a new phase. Now, the first half of the song is interesting and, and painful all the tracks we've heard up until this point in a weird light because Hardy portrays himself as like a mockingbird, somebody who's just like copying sounds and songs that he's heard before, which I don't entirely disagree with in concept because all the tracks up until this point are really bland, unimaginative, derivative, and don't exactly strike me as, you know, being based on an original thought uh, from a guy who, you know, put a lot of effort into what, what exactly you're hearing. So I guess that makes sense. Uh, but then from here, he, he transitions from the Mockingbird into the Crow, which is kind of like this um, edgier bird sona. <laughs> I'm not trying to make Hardy out to seem like a furry or anything. Is 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 that is? Do they have a different name for it? If you're bird, if you're into birds. But yeah, I guess he moves into this other bird sona, which is like this darker, meaner, heavier, angrier edgier, but but still very derivative version of himself where he is now like yelling and screaming and howling over really heavy alternative rock riffs. Uh, he's sounding like Kid Rock a little bit here with some slight rap rock shouts and flows. Of course, the vocal mixing is still awful and somehow overpowers the entire instrumental even though uh, it's it's got this, again, heavy alternative rock flair. The music kind of sounds like something off a puddle of mud a record as well. So now Hardy is fully transitioned into the crow. And what does the crow have to say that the mockingbird doesn't? Well, we get our first taste of that on the song Sold Out, where Hardy reminds us that uh, he's not sold out. He has no interest in selling out. What is he doing uh, that signifies not selling out? Well, he'll, he has no problem with putting a dead buck on Instagram. <laughs> Sorry, is, is that... Is that not selling out? If, if you were afraid of doing that, would that be a signifier of you selling out? Like also take note of the fact that we've got our first full real rock song on the album and the instrumentation sounds so gross, so stiff, so plastic. It doesn't even feel like I'm hearing humans perform it. Of course on the song Jack, just like with the song Happy, he is singing from the perspective of Jack Daniels of liquor and, uh, and yeah, you know, liquor, is with you during this time, during that time, 
time hel helping you gain the courage to uh, talk to that girl that you like and a host of other things as well. It's just so cheap and played out and gross and weird. It's trying to be so hard and dark and authoritative, but it couldn't sound more silly. The irony of this track is that it's followed by a truck bed, which is more White Claw than it is Jack, if, if we're talking drinks. Because we legit have a piece of, I, I don't know, I guess you could call it like electro pop country. It's got some of that twangy instrumentation, but it's got the electronic beats as well and some of the sugary synths. I mean, as a genre fusion, conceptually, it's interesting, but of course, like, you know, given uh, the taste and tact of everything you've heard so far on the album, presuming you've heard it, uh, of course, it goes over as well as anything else here. The whistles in the background, too, sound like something... Uh, out of, I don't know, a Peter Bjorn and John or like a, 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 a freaking Pitbull song. We just did a song about not selling out. Meanwhile, if you asked me what a piece of sellout country would sound like, I, I would tell you this. From here we get more weird, commercially slanted attempts at fusing country music with other stuff. We have, uh, you know, 3006, which sounds like Hardy trying to embrace a really bad pop-punk aesthetic with these uh, heavy pounding chords, sort of a snottier vocal delivery. Of course it's cringe as hell. He should have gotten MGK to do a feature on it. Then we have the overly dramatic I Ain't In The Country No More. But yeah, he portrays himself as being in the city on this one, and my god, it's, it's like a horrible place. He's so scared. He's so freaked out. We're not in Kansas anymore. Like there's a lyric on here about him like cutting his foot <laughs> Put on glass. Wear shoes, bro. Put a pair of freaking shoes on. Like, it sounds like he's having such a traumatic experience uh, being in a place with sidewalks and pavement and, I don't know, uh, stores that aren't Walmart. He also makes mention of, like, you know, loving where he's from and that he'll be the martyr for that, which... Uh, <sighs> How? In what way? Who's crucifying you for being proud of where you're from or like being from a rural area? No one. Literally no one. Following this, we have the track Radio Song, where Hardy tries to consciously parody or make fun of the idea of a radio-friendly country song, which he starts kind of playing into that with some twangy acoustics and instrumentation, uh, some vocals that sound like they're done in more of a, tr of a traditional country style, but with uh, maybe a bit of camp thrown on there for, you know, mock purposes. But here's the thing, these silly kind of listener friendly country sounds that he's playing with here sound just like the country ballads on the front end of the record. How can you be here making fun of this sound when you were literally unironically producing exactly this just earlier on the album in the first half? But then from here we transition out of these, uh, you know, very friendly, happy-go-lucky country passages into heavy riffs and a breakdown and a part where Hardy says, fuck, oh yeah. He says the F word, and that makes it not a radio song at all. Not like there's loads of songs on the radio that just have the F word edited out of them and they're popular anyway. And as if the vibes around this record couldn't get any more rancid, uh, we have Kill Shit Till I Die, where Hardy makes a big deal of, you know, uh, hunting culture, but then also uh, gun culture and owning as many guns as you can because you want them for when, you know, shit goes down, when there's bombs in the sky. Bro, I have, like, news for you. If, if there's literally a bomb in the sky, like, raining down on you, all the weaponry, all the firepower in the world is not going to save your life. <laughs> If I see a bomb coming down and about to drop on me, I'm not going to suddenly wish, man, uh, if only I had 300 guns right now, I, I, I would be set. There's also a trap beat on this track, some death metal growls, some heavy alt metal riffs. It is so gross. It's so tacky. It's so... Ugh. And then finally we have the closer, the Redneck song, which if I was a Redneck, if I considered myself to be a Redneck, I would uh, find this song offensive because it just sounds like a gross parody of things that could potentially represent me. Like this sounds like an SNL skit meant to make fun of people who think that they're rednecks. And again, why are the harmonies so damn loud? Why is there a Weezer-esque novelty guitar solo? Why are there so many Walmart shoutouts? Walmart does not care about you. It is so sad and unfortunate and a reflection of the economic death of America that rural communities have become so dependent on Walmart for their food and basically like their shopping infrastructure that we have artists like 
like this, referencing it so often. And the fact that that is not a discussion or even a mention at all on this LP as it's trying to celebrate country and Southern and redneck culture, but instead focuses on beer and Jack. God take me away from this album and uh, let no other album like it come across my path or desk into the future. I appreciate you, thank you. Yeah, this uh, new Hardy album is not good.